a lot of times, you know, this is just human behavior. What we do is we, we are, we're more committed to staying stuck. We don't know that, it's not conscious. Yep. It's just, it's easier to stay the same than it mm -hmm. is to change. The yes. wins multiply, they Todd. Win this is what we do in Vegas. We only <laughs> acknowledge the wins. I'm like, why would I not do that with myself? In Vegas, we're like, we only acknowledge the wins. We only acknowledge, and we always yes. leave so happy having had so much fun. Wow. Because we only look at the times we that won. That is so good. Most people are hypnotizable. I mean, we're hypnotized every single day by the TV, right. by what's on the news. We just don't call it hypnosis. But Ooh, she's spitting. Didn't that sound like a rap? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Annie Wood, to my Woody Shooties, Coodies, uh, or Fannies, Insanies, and whatever else I call you. Guys, this is an exciting episode, episode 76. 1776 is when we uh, sailed the ocean blue or something, wasn't it? No. What'd we do? That was like 1400s. Oh, okay. I was off by a few. That's all right. Guys, we're not here for math, are we? We're here to laugh. That's and history. To learn. And to learn. History is mystery. We're not here for subjects, okay? We're not here to know which subject is what. Uh, today's a special episode. I have my, my friend, Mary Lou, my soul sister. She is my hypnotist. She has helped me so much change my life. She is here to... Uh, explain what she does, get interrupted by me, have me tell you stories of the things I learned. And uh, she has some cool things to offer you as well. But please enjoy. I know a lot of people have been hitting me up and wanting to know more about hypnosis. And this is my girl, changed my damn life. So check her out and check hypnosis out and enjoy this episode. Oh, also, I'm dates. on the road. I'm on the road. She's helped me a lot with on my road thoughts. Uh, you guys can see me April 19th and 20th this weekend in Spokane, Washington. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get over there. Then the following weekend, April 26th and 27th, I'll be in Fort Worth, Texas. Then we have a very special Annie Wood and Friends with the Netflix is a Joke Festival. We have some huge comics that are so big that I can't even announce them until week of because they're doing arenas in town. So you're going to want to just get those tickets. It will sell out. Trust me, they're the best comics alive. Um, also May 24th, 25th, I'll be at the Royal Theater in Ontario, Toronto. Um, I'll be in Jacksonville, Florida, the 28th and 29th of June, September. I'll be in Tacoma, Washington, and I'll be in Naples, Florida, October 10th. I have so many new dates. I just added the tickets will go on sale soon. So please check. That's annoying. Please check annieletterman.com slash shows to see those. Okay. I can't wait to see you. Welcome to Annie Wood. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Annie Wood, episode 76, as in the 76ers, as in Philadelphia's basketball team. Did you think I was going to say baseball? I know. I know sports, okay? I'm here. This is a very special episode, okay? I'm embracing the woo. I'm letting you guys in, even though it's brain science. Um, I'm letting you in on a very special part of my life. I have invited my hypnotherapist and best friend, Aww. one of my favorite people on this earth, Mary Lou Rodriguez here, to Annie Wood. Mary Lou, tell, wave to the fans. Bye. Hello, hello everyone. Mary Lou's here, she came straight from Portland. I did. I don't wanna brag, we got a woman on a plane to come here. But Mary Lou and I met um, in a, a transformational program. And um, I, met, I wrote on the, the Facebook page for it that I was need, or I spoke on there that I was needing some help with some, but I had, I had given a, done a video on this page and I had said that I was looking to change some things. And then Mary Lou was sent to me and then we started working together. And then it's been, yeah. it's been incredible. I've had a lot of breakthroughs and um, yeah, it's just been, it's been a fun friendship. Mary Lou was on the party bus when Todd proposed to me. Oh, that was so magical. That was fun. Were, now I want to know, were yeah. you scared when my dad, I saw fear in his eyes when the ring was the wrong size and I started screaming, there was fear. Cause we were on a moving <laughs> vehicle. Everyone, Oh God, is she going to fill up the car? Everyone got tense. <laughs> my dad was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, <laughs> And then he, he was like, it's all okay. It's all great. And I know, like, is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> you did. I was engaged, engagement Zilla. Oh my gosh. We have to pull out those pictures that we took of that you. That was so Where you fun. were like. I was, was so <laughs> mad. 
It was so, I mean, when you choreograph most of your own engagement and then it doesn't go right, you go, how did, this, how did I fail at my own surprise again? You, you had your, like, you were like this. <laughs> no, it was, oh, because it was right up here? <laughs> oh my God. But other than that. But other than that. <laughs> So I want to, okay, so I ask people, I think people have some basic questions about hypnosis. Yeah. And then I, I do want people to kind of know a little bit of, your, if you're willing to share. Yeah. Because we have some stuff in common that is pretty fun. It's true. We do. Um, like your origin story of how you came in to be a, are you a hypnotherapist? Yeah. That's what you used to call yourself. Yeah. Not a hypnotist. Is there a difference? Um, I think it's, a, it's regulation, which state you're in. You, it's like, it's state regulated, whether you can call yourself a hypnotist or a hypnotherapist. Yeah. So I can call myself both in the state yeah. of Oregon. Cool. Cause you know, she's a both. She identifies <laughs> as both. So I'm a both. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So tell me, I know a little bit of your origin story, but if you want to tell the masses. Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, I was thinking about this. I'm like, where do I start with this? You know, cause I, I really had a lot of struggles in my life and two of the biggest struggles were I was a drunk yeah, and I was broke. Baracha. <laughs> I was a baracha. And I was like, which came first? I can't even remember. That's your chicken and egg. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was it, it was it the bean. Well, uh, being a drunk pairs well with also being broke. It really does. It does just, Ooh, what a delicious combo. I know. I know. And I wanted to do something different. Like I knew, I knew that I was capable of so much more. And I was like, what do I need to do in order to change my life? And I knew it had to do with my brain. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'm all in. And I went to see a hypnotherapist who really gave me the skills and the understanding on addiction and helping me to understand that there was something underneath that that was really the reason why I was drinking. And I get a little choked up when I think about yeah. it because I've come so far and I'm such mm -hmm. a different person than yeah. who I was, you know, five and a half years ago. And you're helping other people do that too. I know just five and a half years. Yeah. Isn't that wild how yeah. your whole life changed My whole so life much? is totally changed. I'm a completely different woman. And for me, it was really learning how to love and accept myself mm -hmm. and respecting myself yeah. and knowing that there was something more for me. I had a dream and I wanted to, I wanted to be free and live my dream life, but I just didn't know how to get there until I got sober. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, but I have a question because I always felt like drinking was like, it was obviously like a repression of my negative feelings for myself and not wanting to deal with things that had happened to me. And then, so drinking was basically like, I would, get so wasted that it was almost like a blackout. So it was like, I would yeah. blackout and then it was like a break, a smoke break from myself. I would right. say, you know, like, oh, let's get away from this girl or yeah. whatever. And Absolutely. then that perpetual like piling on of like, yeah. tomorrow I'll get this shit together. I'll do this, I'll do that. Yeah. And then it's just like, just having this easy way out, which yeah. was just getting totally wasted. Yeah, I always thought of it as like numbing out, but the truth is I was numbing out from myself. Yeah. And just hating what I had become and what my life was like. Yeah. And what was your, like, how did you find out about the hypnotist? And yeah. like, where did that, like, you just were scrolling the internet? You were like, help me, get me the f*** off this couch. Or whatever. I assume, I, I'm imagining you passed out, like, like half on the couch, half, where your arms on the floor. I'm imagining you, like, face down, you know, ass up I, on the f couch. At that time, I did have a bed on the floor. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. No, I bed frames don't pair well with being a drunk, by the way. You want to just no. plop on the ground. I'm not exactly sure how the idea, like, I know I heard it somewhere and then I looked on the internet Yeah, and that's, that, that was the beginning of learning more about what hypnosis really is. And had you felt like you had reached a rock bottom at that point? Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Maybe stretched a little. I was, I like rolled around on the floor for a while. My rock bottom, I was like chilling on it for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's like, it took me a lot to get to my rock bottom, but I was there and I'm like, this is it. Like, I'm going to either drink my life away or I'm going to make the decision to do something different with my life. Yeah. And they're like, we've got to tinker with this thing. We got to tinker gotta, with it. <laughs> we've got to loosen and tighten some screws. And, and, and then yeah. so this guy that you went to, when you met with him, you said, 
Was it to stop drinking or was it to get organized? You probably said something else, right? No, well, yeah. Well, I went with a list of like 20 things. I want to lose weight. And she's like, you know, and she was like, but you're here for alcohol. And I was like, I want to find love. (laughs) She's like, but you're here for alcohol. I want a billion dollars. I want to work on my money story. I need a car. I need a really nice car. (laughs) Yeah, no. And she was, I remember when she was like, okay, so once we finally figured out that I'm really there for alcohol, she was like, well, I just want to share with you that alcohol really isn't the problem. Mm. I mean, can you imagine somebody telling you that? You know, it's like. Well, I found that out three months <laughs> in when I was like, I'm still bottom. I can't find my pants still. It was just my brain. She was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do you remember your first question? You're like, oh, wait, was drinking literally not the problem? I'm still so fucked up. I remember I was like, I, I, I literally wanted to like, just be like, what are you talking about? Of course, yeah. that's the problem. Like, that's yeah. my whole. Anyways, like so much destruction had happened because of alcohol. Right. So, so she was like, no, it's the symptom. She's like, the problem is all of the traumas that mm. you're running away from. Yeah. And so I was like, okay. She's like, are you ready? I'm like, I am. Yeah. And, and so, so we went on this beautiful transformation. And what I really understand now is that part of my job in the world is to help give people hope that no matter what your story is, no matter what your addiction is, no matter what your traumas are, no matter if you're first generation Mexican, no matter what, like you can change your life. And I teach people how to do that. Yeah. Is okay. Would your parents be called last generation Mexican because they left Mexico, by the way? <laughs> it's just an ADD moment. <laughs> Yes, they would be. Okay. Uh, yes. we went from last to first, baby. <laughs> last to first, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, pre wall. So, so you just got to come over regular. Yes. Yes. So were you born here? Is that what I first was, generation yeah. means? Okay. And, yeah. I, and then do you feel like you had to heal the traumas of your parents and that type of stuff? Because that sometimes gets <clears> to be yeah, a little much. I know we can relate there too. A little yeah. much. I'm like, I got to heal your shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, my dad's always like when they bring in past lives i'm like no, 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 i know no, no. Let's i do know this life. i i agree too it's like let's let's start here with but i do are. think us healing it just automatically kind of heals them i don't want to yeah. go back because i did there's so many different types of hypnosis and i did do without you i yeah. did past life regression yeah. have you ever done that with people or no had it done to you i've had it done to me yeah did you like it i did not this I did part <laughs> Which is part of the reason why I didn't, I don't do it. It's just because it just, it just felt like I wasn't, it just didn't align with me. I felt really like performative during it where I was like, oh, I want to make up a good story. So basically what happened was someone put me into an hypnosis, but I didn't, to be honest, like I trust you. And I want to talk to you about this too, because this was one of the questions, like why yeah. are some people oh, susceptible yeah. to it and others aren't yeah. uh, suggestible? And so I... I've already done hypnosis with Mary Lou for what, two, two, three years at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And I very much trust you. And I trusted you in the beginning. I was very ready. And I think the timing of everything built just like an automatic trust and your, your vibe matching mine and stuff. But it was very easy for me to like settle into your hypnosis. And then, so with this other person, it was like, I just didn't, um, I had known him through something out. Like I was like, yeah, this, it was just like very, and then, so I wasn't, I kind of made a decision whether it was conscious or not. I was like, this ain't going to go. Yeah. This ain't going to fly. So then I wasn't really hypnotized. And then he was asking me to like recall these past lives. And I was just trying to come up with like a good story. Yeah. And I was just my whole, my, everything in me was like, just don't make it a movie you just saw. You know, I was like, I'm going to end up like on like a beach, you know, I'd be like, there's sand everywhere. And a worm got me, you know? Yeah. But so. So he, we're going back in time and he, there were so many lives. I was like, can we find this? How many lives are we going to do? Yeah, yeah. It was three hours long. I was like, oh my God. But I also could have just said, hey man, yeah, this isn't working out for me. But instead I like didn't want to insult his yeah. feelings, even though maybe he's watching this and this will insult him. But um, I ended up, he was like, let's, let's see one of your lives where you lived like a long life. Because I kept like getting chased by Jack the Ripper or, you know, yeah, getting Young, I was like a. I was just making shit up. I was <laughs> just making shit up. Jack the River I was house. just everything I was doing That's was making shit up. Life. Everything was like, uh, <laughs> what can I do? And then I, I, I mean, 
I was like trying not to laugh because I was like, it was just getting so crazy. So I was like, yeah, all right, I have to do one more. I live a long life. So I make myself this old woman. I think I named her Maria. Oh my God. And then I'm this old woman named Maria and I'm on the beach and I'm like dying in my husband's arms or something. It's like, so, and I'm like cringing. I'm like, I'm making yeah. the worst. This is like the worst rom-com or whatever. So then he's like, or my husband had died. He goes, how, how did you meet him? I was like, I was a nurse in the war. And he was like, which war? And I'm like, not educated enough to know what war would have oh been. Oh my gosh, so I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I just couldn't even like pick the war. I was like, it which was war? just very. That's funny. It was a, it was a fail. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. there's certainly ones that I'm like, that are a little more, not yeah. that I don't, I wouldn't go woo woo, but I think with you, it was so helpful because it was like, what are the blocks? Yeah. And then talking through the blocks and then what could really be the messaging underneath it that yeah. I'm telling myself that are keeping me yes. away from those things. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes it like, so part of what I do a little bit differently than maybe the average hypnotherapist is that I do talking beforehand. So you don't just come in onto Zoom and I say, close your eyes. And then we start. Is that what some people do? Yeah. Oh, that would be too much. Of, like, yeah. Okay. It'd be yeah. a lot to just go into. But yeah, maybe. Maybe. Close yeah. your eyes and, yeah. and let's get started. No, I don't do that. Like part of the magic that that is me is that I love to dig into the subconscious. Mm. Like I want to know specifically what is causing What's the root here that we're working on that is causing the 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 uh, trigger or um, the feelings, you know, whatever it is that you want to call it to or the, you know, to the situation that's happening. Like, I want to know the why, which makes it so fun for me mm -hmm. because it's not it's not just enough. People will come to me and they'll say, I want to organize my closet. And <laughs> I don't know what she's, she's talking about. <laughs> and I'll be like, uh, <laughs> HIPAA law states are not allowed to say that. <laughs> I'll be like, that's not the problem. Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, it's a little bit. I'm like, let's look at what's underneath the problem. That's a symptom mm -hmm. of the problem. And so I want to know what's underneath that. And then when we understand what's underneath that, then we do the rewiring. Yes. And then it. you say my line that I love where she goes, what does your beautiful brain need to hear? Yeah. What does your beautiful brain need to hear? And I just to use me as an example and the the stuff with the the closet and the organization <laughs> and all that kidding. stuff. I did have like a crazy breakthrough. I felt on our last. I oh, always do yeah. every session. I'm like, oh, my God, Mary Lou rules. But then this this one, it just it just keeps getting yeah. bigger. And then it's like filling in these pieces of like, oh, my God, this is why I've been self-sabotaging and all these, things, you know. And so the last one I realized I've always felt like I have this. And I, I think it is a symptom of ADD because I see it in my dad a lot too, but it's like, I always felt like I had this authority figure in my head that I'm fighting against. Mm -hmm. So it's like the authority figure is like clean your closet. I'm like, you dude, closets are for losers. Like, what are you talking about? And then what I realized was that that, um, that voice in my head is actually not this like nasty <laughs> authority figure. It's actually the part of me that really believes in myself. Yeah. And that. The part I'm really aligning with and associating with or was until this breakthrough was the part of me that did not believe I could do it, that did not think I was worth it, yeah. that did not think that I deserve to be a screenwriter, an actress, a successful comedian, all of these things that I've always wanted to do, an author, because right I can't do it because I am broken or, yeah. you know, and then underneath that is not just that, it's, it's. It's I'm telling myself that because I'm afraid of how being successful I could be. I'm actually afraid of that because I have these pre-wiring thoughts of like, that's actually bad to be that yeah. successful. And to be that successful, I would, wouldn't be relatable to people anymore. I would yeah. be, have too much and other people would have too little. And, yep. um, and then I traced that back to when I was born with my twin brother. And my family always told me things like, oh, your twin brother you were so much bigger than him. You stole his nutrients in the womb. And it's just like a stupid little thing your parents say, but I think that really absorbed in me like, oh, I took too much. Yep. And I took from someone else and then I don't want to take from other people. And then thinking that my own success means someone else's yep. failure or, you know, and just really not, basically not staying in my own lane at all and feeling yeah. like my own lane, I didn't even, wasn't even worthy to have my own lane because it would be unfair and stuff like that. So then unwinding all of those things and implementing, which we talked about last week, 
yeah. the gold star system, <laughs> which is been, working. It's been working. We just have the poster yeah. board downstairs. Todd and I put our stars up and it's working. I'm just getting, I'm just knocking down pins. I remember I had a friend. I was very overwhelmed. I was living on her couch years ago in Santa Fe with so many of those friends, my friend Lizzie. I got to buy these people sh or is that me <laughs> doing the thing again? I'm like, I they, need to they, buy you they, a they, house. <laughs> they did let you sleep on. It was their, very yeah. nice. Yes. I need yeah. to buy you a new couch. Um, but she, she was like, I was so overwhelmed. She was like, you just need to look at like, you're, you're knocking down pins, you're bowling yeah. and you're just knocking down pins. You don't have to get a strike. You know, you could just, yeah, you could just knock them down one by one. So yeah. I've been knocking down pins and it's been really good. Yeah. But it's just so interesting that it's like, it can look like, oh, I'm just, it's just hard to do my laundry. I'm overwhelmed. I have yeah. ADD, but really what's under that is I'm actually a fuck up. And then it's like under the fuck up is like, I'm actually not a fuck up, but yeah. if I'm not a fuck up, I won't. Yeah. People will leave me and I yeah. won't be around people. I won't be relatable. And yeah. that's how I've learned to go through the world. You know, as I listen to you, you know, when you're sharing these, like these real beliefs that you had underneath and that you're beginning to rewire, it's like, it's so beautiful, Annie. And I know so many people can relate to this because for so long, I felt like, you know, I'm broken. What's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. And on our calls, I'll be like, there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. And there is nothing wrong with us. And I understand that now it's the way we were, it's the way our brain is wired. Right. So part of what you're doing is you're upgrading your software system. Yeah. And, and that's such a beautiful way to describe like, you know, hypnosis or transformation, or, you know, it's like, we are looking at what's, what's blocking you from truly, um, from truly living the life that you desire. And now you're upgrading your right. software system. And then, so or like, okay, so system. what, what we would do in the program is then Mary Lou will make me a hypnosis. You can also do self-hypnosis. Yep. I know that it, it might even be more helpful later on for me to be saying it to myself. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and then, so if I go, um, success. If, if my blocks are my own success will keep me away from people or keep me alone. I could then now tell myself being successful makes you more likable, lovable, all these things, you know, just rewiring those things. And yeah. then when I'm in a, in a, what is it? Theta? Yeah. Get yourself into the theta brain waves, And then yes. your brain is, is, suggestible. Yes. I'm learning about it. Yes. She taught yep. me hypnosis. I went to yeah. 50 of the classes. I'm still like, <laughs> what was the, I'm like, she's doing great. You're doing really good. And then, so you just keep telling yourself that and then it rewires your brain. Now I wanted to talk to you. Yeah. Have you maybe explained to them too? Cause it's fun. You're my first expert on here. Uh, yeah. Aww. Um, I know that is it, it's your brain is like a sponge when you're under the age of what is it? Seven. seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so can you speak about that and how yeah. your subconscious is developed? Yeah. So essentially between the ages of zero and seven, you are completely suggestible. So your prefrontal cortex is not formed. The conscious part of your brain is not formed. And so basically you're like a sponge and everything that you see, everything that you hear, everything that's modeled to you just goes into your brain unedited mm. and it becomes a program right. that repeats over over and over <laughs> and over again. So whatever you learned growing up. So this is what, this is part of what I do is I help people unlearn their programming and their conditioning. So whatever you learned growing up, whatever you were told growing up, it went into your brain unedited and you believed it. Mm -hmm. And if you were told really amazing things, then you really, you probably have a really great, um, a really great self-confidence. And if you were told things that weren't so great, yeah, like, <laughs> But, who, who do you think you are? Or Right, but it's so funny because it's like, if you think about what your parents' job is, right? It's to keep you alive. Yeah. So they don't, and nobody was really talking about this shit yeah. back then that much. But it's, yeah. my parents, you can see where they would just be like, don't do that. Yeah. In a stern voice. And then I'm, I'm bad. I'm bad. Yeah. It's not even that they would mean to do it. I mean, yeah. some people have parents that are yeah. like, you're a piece of, I'm, not that my dad wasn't, didn't say some things back in the day that he is. Yeah. Yeah. Has now completely yeah. transformed. But it's like, you know, you. You take on these things, you know, your dad comes home from work, he's in a bad mood, says something to you yeah. just out of like whatever thing is yeah. going on with him. And then it's just in your brain for the rest of your life. Unless yes. you. Yes. My stepdad in, in Spanish. I mean, he doesn't say this to me today, but, you know, when I was younger growing up, he always told me in Spanish I was never going to amount to anything. Mm. And that's what I believe. Yeah. And 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 that was what kept uh, showing up you know, evidence in my life of me never really becoming 
who I truly knew I could be because I believed that I was never going to be anybody. I know. It's so interesting how your brain can just calibrate to whatever you want to believe. If you want to believe that the world is sexist, I could show you a hundred times where a man treated me a certain way. Or if I'm calibrating that like, I'm girl power and women are fucking badasses. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to calibrate to that day. And it's just all the way you're, yeah. the way you <laughs> set your intentions and the, you just see the world through those glasses. Yeah. So it isn't really about blaming our parents. My mom did the best job that she could. It's really about taking responsibility now in my life to be like, okay, what do I want to believe about myself? Do mm-hmm. I, do I want to believe that I'm never going to amount to anything? No, I don't. So now I can take responsibility and be like, what does my beautiful brain need to hear? Mm-hmm. I am unstoppable. Yeah. And then you, you do a lot of work with habits too. Mary yeah. Lou has, ha, runs programs all the time too. We'll, we'll put links to those and she can talk about those too, but um, you do like habits programs a lot. Yeah. And then what is it that the, how long does it take the brain to what, how yeah. many days is it? The sweet spot, according to neuroscience, is 67 days. 67. Yeah. So close. It could have just been two more. It would have been 69, <laughs> and we all would have remembered it and loved it, and we all would have had a good laugh. I, I can hear Todd giggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 67 days. And uh, it's, you know, it's like the biggest part about changing your life is actually being committed. Yeah. Being committed to your dream, being committed to your goal, yeah. being committed to your habit. A lot of times, you know, this is just human behavior. What we do is we, we are, we're more committed to staying stuck. We don't know that. It's not conscious. Yep. It's just it's easier to stay the same than it mm-hmm. is to change. I remember reading this book by this woman named Sark, and she would kind of like draw. It was like crayons wrote the thing. It was yeah. kind of the only book that I could read. I'm like, oh, look, it's for <laughs> yeah. my reading level. Um, and- but, she, but she had said... Um, Happiness is all around you. You just have to yeah. like grab it or something like that. Because it, it was easier. That's when I realized, oh, it's easier to suffer for me. For some reason, my comfort zone is in suffering. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I could just choose the happier route. And sometimes it's hard. You know, I get, I always get this anxiety in my chest. And I actually did a really cool exercise of yours. You gave me this hypnosis that was called befriending your fear. Yeah. And I started to visualize what, so I started to think of like, where is my fear? And it's always in my chest right here. And I visualized it and I saw it as this car guy. It was like this little tar guy. And he was like clinging to me. And I was like, get off me, get off me. And and the tar guy was like, you wanted me here. You told me to be here. And it was like this protection that I had to like keep myself at this yeah. level that was comfortable. Yes. Yeah. That almost sounds like self-sabotage. Right? Oh, does it? <laughs> Hmm. or you could call it self-protection yeah which is what you're saying yeah and then so it was about like thanking that and then yeah. moving on but sometimes I'll get back into those patterns where I feel the panic and then I start to be like I love myself I love yeah. myself I love myself it is all very yeah how do I put this gay <laughs> you gotta lean into the cringe that's what I realized you gotta lean into the cringe of it all oh. and just because I do feel like through the cringe is the happy is yeah. like is the goal yes Yes. And, and there's this part of me that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell myself I love myself. Look in the mirror and say I love you. Yeah. You know. And then getting through that yeah. was just like, oh my god. Yeah. And then you look back and you go, why would that be cringe? Yeah. To love myself. Yeah. Oh, you know, because there's so many things too with comedy, and I think I have these blocks on, on doing my special, and I have this fear on doing my special yeah. and stuff. And a lot of it's because it's like this fear of cr- I don't want to be cringe or whatever. And it's like I decided somewhere that. My special, like specials have to be the certain way. And it's not even a thing I really hold to everyone else. It's like just on myself. Yeah. Or, or, you know, I, they they call it playing to the back of the room. So when you first start comedy, you're only really performing to comedians and then comedians will hang out in the back of the room. So then you want to make the comics laugh, but then the general audience is who's buying your tickets and paying for your things. Why am I calibrating to the people that are like, yeah possibly competing with me, don't like me, don't want me to succeed or have attached their career to my career. Not that I think that of comics, but yeah, but, um, yeah, it's funny. It's and yeah. So- <laughs> the gayer I get, the happier I get. Yeah. That's why they call it happy. That's why it that's means what, happy. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a derogatory term. What's the yeah. line from your band that you like, Todd? It's Walter Mitty, right? Yeah. Walter but Mitty the, band, the song, it's really a good, it's a great line. Oh. 
And this is what I say. Oh. I think it's called Otter Pops in the Ice Box. Oh, <laughs> we love this song. Otter Pops in the it's ice great. Box. <laughs> Such a good song. Here we go. You want to read the whole thing? Oh, what the hell? All right, I'll read it as a poem. I just watched the news for 15 minutes and goddamn, <laughs> am I depressed? I just spent an hour on Facebook until I realized I couldn't care less. And I keep fighting and I keep fighting who we are. We've been, we've become. I can't take it. Soon I'll just sob, not bleed nostalgia again. <laughs> oh my God. Are you laughing at me trying to read? No, it's just. The, it's good. Reading lyrics, the song yeah. Yeah, as like a poem is like completely different. <laughs> My role says, I, well, I can't remember how to sing. I can't remember how it goes. My role says I should sit up and take it, but something tells me I should do my best to fight it. Oh, f oh my God. We could just, <laughs> and I just spent another hour on the 55. Shelby f Jacobson was on my mind. Okay, Tried oh, to convince her. I'm a simple and happy guy, but I just came off as a nervous neurotic type. Something's wrong, my dear, when I don't know if I'll stand here in one year. And I keep <clears throat> having all of these thoughts of nihilism <laughs> and how truth is only relevant. Now I can barely brush my teeth. Oh, I relate to that. <laughs> now I'm from Southern California where we say words like gay and I don't mean to offend. It's just the way I was raised. <laughs> Because I'm always being hunted and take a stab at who I am. And I would say I don't care, but I'm losing my friends. Yeah. Being force fed what to believe in, like politics and horoscopes and cliche definitions of success, telling me my time's up by choice. This does not sound like a song. Four year old, four year old inside of me who just wants to go out and play. Yeah. Through all the bullshit, I just wish someone would say, come a little closer. We've got otter, pi pi otter pops in the ice box. We've oh, got milk and cookies by the TV I see. to yeah. make you feel all right. I don't yeah. remember how to sing it, but isn't that <laughs> cute and relevant? It sure. Yes, we could talk about this forever. Yeah. All the lyrics in here. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're a read lyrics podcast. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I totally agree with you. It is like, you know, Probably like 15 years ago, I would have said I'd never stand in the mirror and say I love myself. Yeah. But I was so effing unhappy. I gotta tell you, <laughs> but why yeah, that what am I fighting to be? Who am I being cool to? Yes. Who am I? Yes. Now I look in the mirror and I'm just like, I love myself. Yes. I am unstoppable. Yeah. Go, Mary Lou. Good job. You can do it. Like whatever it is that I need to hear, like I look in the mirror and I go. Because I no one's going to one. give us Otter Pops. We have to give ourselves <laughs> Otter Pops. We have to reparent ourselves. I'm doing a gold star system, you guys, okay? it's for. I talked to my friend Abby. She goes, I do this with my four-year-old. I go, exactly. <laughs> We're going, I'm happy Madisoning myself, okay? I'm going back to the basics. I'm reteaching myself. I'm reparenting myself. Yeah. And I'm so blessed because I still have my parents and my parents are like lovingly supporting me yeah. fixing all the things they fucked up. Do you know what I mean? And it's so, it's just, yeah. I mean, I'm so proud of myself. I make the bed and it, I don't make the bed well. I just. Yeah, but you do it. Bink, bink. But you and do then it. I get my star and I'm so happy. And then like, I want to get more stars and I'm fighting yeah. Todd over feeding Randy. Yeah. I'm like, I want to get my feeding Randy star. Yeah. And so I think what's happening is what I see is this incremental. I've always wanted just results immediately. I'm like, okay, I want to just start doing something and then oh, I yeah. immediately get them. Like the 67 day thing is yeah. such a nightmare. And I hypnotize myself to be like, no, it's three days. Don't listen to them. Don't <laughs> listen to the, ner the neurologist it can bullshit. Be. It can be. Well, sometimes you I just will. Have to believe yeah, that. I'll ask my, I'll go, dear guides, how many days do I need to get a habit? Three? Okay, thank you. Um, now guys, I've been sponsored by a lot of cool things in the past. A lot of wild things. I have never even imagined being sponsored by something as cool as this, as such a staple in all of our lives, such an amazing thing and such a special version of it, because I have not been able to enjoy this savory treat in, uh, in a while because I am a Los Angeles skinny gal, okay? So I can't usually have this. I am sponsored by, this is my first red sponsor, you guys. 
Ooh, hero that bread is bread. good. And it is a hero because it is letting me eat bread again. Because Hero has so much to offer, okay? If you're trying to eat better, chances are the first thing you ditch is bread. That is me. Bread was out, baby. Bread was out. Stop making your life miserable and eat Hero bread instead. It's everything you love about bread with nothing you don't. It has zero to one gram of net carbs. Thank you, Hero. Thank you, Hero. Thank you, Hero. Zero grams of sugar. Thank you, Hero. Thank you, Hero. And tons of fiber. You know I like to cacas. You know I like to squeeze it out and have it be nice and and kind of wet in the right way. And that's why I love my fiber. It's soft, it's fluffy, just like that cacas. And it tastes amazing. We don't taste the cacas. We Listen, taste the we bread. were gonna bring the, the white bread up, but I ate all that. Todd already ate all the white bread. It's so good. They have so many awesome things. It's also now made with olive oil, which is very cool. Olive oil. It's just, olive oil. It's just very exciting. It's made with natural ingredients. It's awesome. Um, I'm having PB and J's again. I'm having PB and J's again. I had to quit PB and J, and Todd eats them all the time, and that's been so annoying that I couldn't get <sighs> them with him. He's just shoving a PB and J down his throat, and now I can actually have them thanks to Hero, the hero of my life. Their classic white bread is only 45 calories a slice, so if you're trying to drop a few pounds, like your queen, this is what you'll want to use for the, all of those sandwiches. Hero bread is just more than your classic basic PB and J, though. They also have tortillas. Tortillas, burger buns, hot dog buns. How do you say that? Brioche. Brioche oh rolls. My. Hawaiian <laughs> rolls. Croissant. 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 And cheddar biscuits. I tell you what, I love those tortillas. I've been making tacos with this. Todd's things. been Taco Todd, we call him. Taco Todd. <laughs> They all, they're all incredible and they're not going to fill you up with sugar and useless calories. Thank you. Thank you, Hero Bread. Thank you. Thank you for sponsoring the show, but also thank you for sponsoring this new hot bod I have because I could have done it without you. Don't give up being a breadhead. Hero Bread is offering 10% off your order. Go to hero.co and use code Annie at checkout. That's Annie at H-E-R-O dot C-O. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, you guys, guess what time it is? My favorite time of year, of week, of, of the day. It's time for Lume. She loves the time of day to wipe that Lume all over. me, Lume, because I'm putting you on all my cracks. I'm putting you on all my cracks, Lume. I got Lume all over my body, okay? Slither me up, Lume. I love Lume so much. My massage therapist was talking to me about Lume. I go, you gotta watch my podcast. You don't know I'm the Lume girl? She didn't even know. She just went, oh, she saw my bathroom. She goes, oh. You have Lumi? I go, Lumi. I'm the me and Lumi. You're I'm, the spokesperson me. of Lumi. I am, listen, I am Lumi's <laughs> number one fan. I am so obsessed with Lumi. If you guys haven't gotten it yet, you actually hate me. You don't like me because you know I don't mess around. I don't like, this is my favorite product. I love it so much. It smells so freaking good. And it goes on every crack. Every crack. And I like the man version. And Todd likes the man version, but we're not talking about the man version today, but they do have a man version now, which I like slathering up with the girl stuff, honestly. I like being gender bendery with my bow. I like to just put this on a sack. He rubs it on my crack. We squish them together and boy, does it smell like a- Heart attack. Well, I was going to say a coconut <laughs> treat, a coconut delight. <laughs> we love Lumi. I'm not even kidding. I will be speaking to the owner of Lumi. Lumi and I- Lumi and I- Dr. Lumi and I have been, I don't know what her, her full name is, by lover. We've been playing phone tag. We're going to be together. We will be together at last soon. Uh, you'll never know how your day is going, so why not make sure you always smell amazing? Lumi is your answer to outrageous BO control. Okay, because here's the thing. These natural deodorants, they make you smell so bad. I was doing like home remedies where I was like putting like these clay masks in my armpits because I smelled like a freaking hoagie. This is a natural deodorant. You don't have that downtime. It makes you smell delicious right away, and it's so good. Todd's just eating my armpits up. He's eating them up. Ugh. Lumi isn't just for your armpits. It's for anywhere on your body, your feet. Don't. You're not going to see them. Your privates and anywhere things can get smelly, okay? Which there are a lot of crevices. And this stuff has you covered for 72 hours. Ugh. Skip a shower and still smell fresh. Smell like a flower. This stuff is baking soda free, paraben free, and pH balanced for safe use below the belt. And you know what I'm saying. That belt's getting tighter, but this is still, can be some, somewhat of a. You gotta rub it all over your chuchino. My chuchino. <laughs> Choose from awesome scents like toasted coconut, my absolute complete favorite. I love it so, 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 so much. 
Clean Tangerine and Lavender Sage. There's no wrong pick, but this is my number one pick, guys. This is the one. There's also these other ones, but I'm a toasted coconut gal. I'm a nut for toasted coconut. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. You know you need those wipes sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. As a special offer to for Annie Wood listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combined the 15% off with the, with the already discounted starter pack, that's over 40% off their starter pack. Use code Annie15 for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code Annie15 at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. Lumi deodorant, baby. Sue me, Lumi. Okay, so I forgot to talk about this last week. I went to shoot a, a scene in a movie, and the week before, I was starting to get really nervous. So I, all of a sudden, I got a zit right here, and I went, oh my God, did I get mouth herpes for the first time in my life right before I'm about to shoot a movie? I was like, what are the chances that that would happen? And I started talking myself into this. Um, not, not that like, guys, I know you all have mouth herpes, it's fine. It's cute, we love your little open sores, it's adorable. <laughs> I don't have it, okay? And it's shocking. I don't have the, I don't have herpes anywhere except actually I have shingles, which is herpes. But um, I have the old man herpes shingles. Oh my God. It's like cholera <laughs> and yellow fever. Um, but anyway, so I convinced myself, and I'm like, I'm like, is this fucking, what is going on? It's this huge, and I don't know why I'm not just going, this is, is it. Like, I just can't, I'm like worried to talk. I'm like, oh my God, it's going to burst and become this thing. I get Blistex, all this stuff. I go to my dermatologist. She's like, well, I don't want to mess with it in case it is. Where I'm like, can you just diagnose me? Can you just say whether it is or not? She's like, I just don't want to mess with it. She's like, but I really hope it's not. Because if it is, it's going to come out every time you're stressed and every time you're in the sun. I'm like, oh, I'm what? stressed every day. I'm like, <laughs> what like, do oh, you no. mean? But I was thinking in my head, like, I don't like when people say <clears throat> things like that to yeah. me. Because... I don't, I'm not taking that on. So I have yeah. to reject, I have to do a thing where I'm like, I actually reject what you're yeah. saying. And if this is herpes, I'm not getting it every time I'm stressed or every time I'm in the sun. I'm like, I go to the beach every day and I'm like to deal with my stress. Oh, great. I'm going to have, and then I went home and I was like, Todd, what do you think? And he's like, there's a white head. It's a zit. And then I popped it and it was a zit the whole time. But it's just like, I, yeah. And I also made a conscious choice. No, to... at first she didn't believe me it was a zit. She said, no, okay, no, 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 no. The, and the then spinny. I said, all right. And what? then when did you, when did I realize it was a zit? At um, four o'clock in the morning. He, he found me, <laughs> a bright light woke him up and it was the light from my <laughs> cell phone and a magnifying mirror oh as my. I was popping the, I couldn't go another second. I had my little spinnies in the middle of the night. But why so, that relates is, oh, because I don't like the suggestibility of doctors too when yeah, they go, they yeah. just give you the worst yeah, case yeah. scenario always. Well, you were, you, you were about to say, I convinced myself and then you. Well, I convinced myself it wasn't too. I went. Yeah. I just went, you know what? This isn't fucking hurt. Yes. Yeah. I'm not going to have a cold sore during my yeah. goddamn. Yeah. And you didn't. I would say movie debut, but I was in the long dumb <laughs> road as well. <laughs> and I don't know if you count the comedy store documentary. Oh, I love it. Can love we it. figure out a way to help Annie with her night panics? I do have night night nocturnal yeah. because I'm pretty I'm pretty patient with Annie, but the night panics are probably oh, cool. where. Oh, why don't you add that on? The oh, patience. that's great. Now I know he's going to leave me. <laughs> oh, now my husband's going to leave me. Oh, great. I'll never wake up in the middle of the night again. He's going to leave me. <laughs> No, that's just like, you know. I know it is. It is. Last night I had it a little bit. And then I found evidence too. It's like I gave myself something to be. I went online and then got triggered by something. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I was, okay, the night before, <laughs> let me, let's use this as an example. <laughs> so my night spins, not last night, but the night before, were about this woman asked me to write with her for a day. She wanted me to come in. She's doing this app and she wants me to write these things with her. And when she first asked me, I wanted to say no, because I am very busy and I'm writing, I have like writing a movie, I'm writing a TV show and I'm doing these consistently and I have my setup meetings and yeah, they're progressing and I'm excited to be on that role while I'm also writing 
my new jokes and also working on writing my special yeah. out. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't want to write. Yeah. For this woman. But then she's like a friend of my friends. And then I was like, oh, and, and then the topic of it was kind of cool. And I was like, oh, maybe that will help me write other things. And then I've also been thinking I want to. I want to experience new things and be in different avenues and stuff. So I just say, I go, oh, maybe. And she goes, well, it'll be paid. And I went, she thought it wouldn't be paid. Uh -huh. That's weird. But then I was like, okay, I'll do it. But then we never discussed what my rate is. Yeah. And my rate is, I think about, you know, when you, like, you were a babysitter or whatever your job was when you were a teenager, if yeah. someone goes, well, what do you want to be paid? Would that send you into a spiral? Yeah. Yeah. If someone asked you, like, before you <laughs> yes. had your business, or maybe yes. in the beginning of your business, when people yes. ask you your rates, would that, like, spiral you out? Yeah. Because well, you're being faced yeah. with your own worth. When I saw a psychotherapist, he said, he said, he goes, I have a, 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 a scaling rate. And I'm like, well, what do you charge? What the fuck is a scaling <laughs> rate? I was like, but what do you charge? Right. And he goes, well, I would normally charge 150 And I was like, okay, that's yeah. what I want to pay. Yes. So I said, what do you charge? Yes. Cause that would, that would make me go. Ah, ah. <laughs> well, I just, I think, and also when you're telling people what you charge, and this is not something that I struggle with too much. Cause I'm not in situations like this where my, I really should, should have had my agent speaking to her because yeah. Yeah. it's a gig, but I, sometimes I'm just like, yeah, it's just an extra step. That's annoying. And she was coming to me kind of as a friend, you know, as a friend yeah. of a friend. So I went back, um, because I, I remembered my rate when I was writing with Sasha Baron Cohen on Borat, but I wanted to double check. So I went, but I was spinning over it over the night because I was like, oh, like, yeah. And I don't know what it was because it wasn't the normal spin of like, I don't deserve this amount of money. It was the spin of like, I should have handled this before. And but oh. then a little bit maybe leftover of like, oh, my God, I have to tell someone this is what I cost a day, which I am teetering in between being like. You're getting a deal and being like, all right, I understand if she goes to me from now on. But so I went back and I checked and it was, you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's expensive. It's over a thousand dollars. It's, but that's what my rate is. That's yeah. what I was paid. And that's what I was given by this company. Yeah. So I could even make my rate more if I want. And this was yeah. before the pandemic. So that's your, I've, my, my skill set has grown since yeah. then. I'm better at writing and I've, I've had more years of experience. Um, so I sent her my, my rate and I, and she never wrote back, but I was like, good. I was like, you know, and next time I want to just be more upfront and clear in the beginning, just, yeah. Oh, this is my rate. So it's, there's no, mm -hmm. but it is, I was like, what is this low self-esteem that I'm having or feeling like, Ooh, I'm asking too much. What do you think, Todd? No, I, I have that problem when I do editing gigs for people and even for Netflix, when they ask for a rate, I have that problem. But I don't wake up in the middle. Of I the night. don't spin over at night because that night is night night time for me. Yeah, for me, I always night. just put it. And maybe it is something from childhood, like you were saying. But for me, I always just put everything in the morning. I don't think about it at night. I try to yeah. think about just yeah other shit at night. I mean, I. The you, you are could like be the speaking opposite. Laotian to me right now. You're the opposite. You could literally right. have just yeah. been speaking yeah. Laos. You like, bring what? everything to the night and you think about everything at night and then you go, yeah. okay, let me plan out. And then it comes back to the night again. What I hear taught is you have boundaries around your thoughts. You're like, my thoughts are right. so good. I'm not going to have these kinds of thoughts at, at night. I'm going to go to sleep at night. And right. the daytime yes. is when I can think about these thoughts. He's a, He's perfect Todd and that's perfect. why smoking because i started smoking weed again at night because i haven't been able to sleep sometimes so i started smoking but what weed. are you not able why are you not able to sleep are you thinking about things? i think because i'm thinking about things and when i smoke oh, weed and when i smoke weed i'm, I'm like high th thoughts now now i'm, I'm thinking the, about if like, i smoke weed i'm like oh i know <laughs> i'm dying too oh also i'm dying, I'm dying and i'm a loser i think i associate <laughs> drug use and and alcohol and all of those things as like, I'm failing myself because I used it as a tool to fail myself before. Yeah. I, on purpose. Yeah. But wait, Todd. He's also good, Mary Lou. He compartmentalizes his emotions to, he, he doesn't have like bad emotions until he's in traffic or traveling. And then that's when he lets it out. What? He's that's in, what it all he's in a nightmare in traffic <laughs> and... And well, I, haven't, I haven't seen that yet, Todd. I surrender. I surrender <laughs> oh, in those yeah. times. But I'm better. I like that's where I I'm different from you because I that's where I 
I've surrendered. In traffic, I'm like, did we? Yeah, yeah I let it out during that and where else? Maybe like playing video games too. Oh, I know. It's crazy screaming when he's playing video games. Like, yeah, Jesus. I let it out in video games and stuff. That's and he a good spot to let stuff. it out. Yeah, watch a murder. <laughs> watch a murder. When I go to town, he watches so much murder. Dude, we just read that song about all the bad things, all yes. the bad news, and how depressing that is. He was watching the news days. Like, I just want to hear what Iran's doing. I was like, turn this off my TV. I'm like, yeah. look, my one of my best friends is Israeli. I'll hear it from her, and that's the only place I'm hearing it. I'm not hearing about nothing yeah. on the news. Yeah. Well, the night thing is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that it wakes you up in the middle of the night. Self-sabotage. To... And take away my sleep, which take makes away. it harder for my Well, she the next wakes day. up like when I wake up from like after I go to sleep and I wake up, I just go, Oh, I woke up and I just go right back to sleep. When she wakes up, it's almost like her brain turns She's on. like looking for something. I don't oh, know. She and wakes up and she like wakes oh. up and like looks around. Oh. Like she literally like look will look around and then grab her phone or look at me. So, oh. No, I'll remember that lying. I haven't like, I haven't renewed my passport. Like I'll remember a thing that like has nothing to do with anything that's going, like I'll just remember a thing that like to put myself into fight or flight, like yeah. life or death. Ah. Like I, a lot of times yeah. when I get my flights for my gigs, it's at like three in the morning. Cause I like forgot, I'll be like, oh my God, I didn't get my flight for next weekend. Oh. And for some reason you don't just think like, I'll do this in the morning. That's not like, a, an option <laughs> here's what okay here's what did help because i did kind of get a really good handle on this for a second because i realized i had this epiphany in the middle of the night where um i i started thinking what are the things i'm getting anxious about because i would start going like i need to solve my anxiety i need to solve oh there's this problem this this shadowy dark part of myself which is this anxious thing that yeah. i need to what's the anxiety about and then i went why don't I look more at the things I'm getting anxious about rather than the larger picture? Because the larger picture is like abstract at this point. Yeah. So why don't I look at the actual parts? And the parts were to-do list things. Yeah. They yeah. were just items on my to-do yeah. list. So then I was like, oh, before I go to bed, I should have like a five minute to 10 minute time where I just yeah. handle yes. some things because they're not time consuming. Yeah. They're just things that are, in that your are time head. sensitive yeah. that are in oh, my head. Yeah. And so I was doing that for a while and that's just a habit I forgot about. Yeah. My nighttime routine is, is very difficult because one of the other things that wakes me up in the middle of the night, if I forget, if I go to bed and forget to brush my teeth and wash my face, yeah. I panic because I've set that in my head as something like yeah. that I must do. Yeah. So then I failed myself. So then I wake up in the failure of that yeah. and then it's like yeah. becoming light out and I'm washing my face and then yeah. that's a little bit harder to go to sleep because I yeah. just splashed water on my face and yeah. rewoken myself up. Yeah. So if I, wow. I, I know that there is, there's a bedtime routine that changes my life. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. And I think what I was saying before that I got sidetracked from is I always want this immediate. Yeah. I want an immediate uh, answer. I want everything to shift and change immediately. But I keep yeah. hearing from all of these different gurus. It's like 1% a day. You just increase 1%. And I'm like, that is you shit. 1%. Yeah. So I'm going to make it 10% because 1% is like, come on. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. But I do, I am noticing these little increments now and I'm going, oh, yeah. and I'm really proud of myself for the, yeah. that I'm moving yeah. towards yeah. this thing rather than I'm there. Already. Yeah. Because the little increments are turning into. Yeah. It's getting big. <laughs> it's getting big. Because I know you'll do challenges <laughs> where you're like, all right, pick a habit and you'll be like, I'm just stretching. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, mine's just to stretch because mine's like, I'm going to get a six pack. I'm going to work out for five hours every day. No, we start because it's so it's like it's hard on the brain to change first and foremost, and then to change with something like a really big habit, like <laughs> six pack in, a, in seven days. I'm like, I'm going to be the richest and, person in the, in the world. Oh, my gosh. I, it reminds me of a picture that you sent me when I look at <laughs> you had your six pack. And I was like, I, I had to do a double take. I was I'm like, like it's drawn I'm on. like, oh, my gosh, it looks so good. I didn't know it was <laughs> fake. But guys. It's not looking bad. I, oh my I God, manifested that shit. Yeah. So to start out easy so that the habit, so that the habit that you're creating is a habit that you'll, <laughs> that you'll be friends with for a long time. Isn't that so annoying though? Is, do people get so mad at you when you say that? Well, I mean, it's, it's part of transfer. It's part of change Yeah, is understanding that things just aren't going to happen overnight. They're mm -hmm. going to happen. That's right. the good news. 
it will happen. Mm -hmm. You will create new habits. Yeah. It just may take a little bit longer because you've lived your way. You know, you've lived a, a certain way your whole life. So I don't know if you've been getting up in the middle of the night, like regularly, I'm not sure. Like we haven't talked really about you waking up in the middle of the night and, and kind of spinning out. So I definitely want to work on that with you. I got to put a gold star on going back to sleep right away. Yes. So that's, that's great. Well, what happens is I have, like, I want to listen. Sometimes when I wake up, I'm like, oh, I'll listen to Mary Lou's hypnosis. And then I, but it's on my phone. Yeah. There is oh. a, there's, there, I got to get an, I need an oh. iPad touch. I need oh. an iPod touch. Yeah. I need an iPod. Can we yeah. go back to iPod? <laughs> we need to regress. I still have my- oh my God. That's little so blue funny. One. Oh, the little shuffle. But the shuffle's a f- shuffle. The shuffle was like, not enough. You're like, what the <laughs> f- is this? It doesn't give you enough control. <sighs> and then but I need yeah. just like something that can't go online, but yeah. has, but can go online to put the things on it. Yeah. I need a disc. I if anybody disc. has any recommendations. I need well, a five disc CD player. You know what else I think it is too? Because Annie's had some ex boyfriends that probably had that problem as well, right? I had, <laughs> but because I had an ex girlfriend that she was like a cheater, so she, when she would like she would like fall asleep and she would do like kind of the same thing where she would wake up, but she would grab her phone and like hide it and make sure like her phone was like hidden. Like that was like her wake up panic thing because she was always cheating on her phone. Aww. So she needed to have it like somewhere. Who would cheat on my angel? So she would wake Why up. that bitch cheated on you? So she mind. would just wake up and then go, oh, oh, and then grab her phone and then like hide it. So and do you have for flashbacks a while, when I'm doing that? No, but for a while I... After that, that, I started doing that. I would just wake up and grab for no reason. Then I would just realize and I'd just be like, am I just doing what this used to do? You know what I like? (laughs) Do you know what I like about what you're saying? It kind of reminds me of like, there's this realm of, of like, you can go like a science and logical route and you can go really woo woo with things because I believe, I believe that she like her habits kind of got into, and I definitely have habits for my ex-boyfriend for sure. He used to wake up in the middle of the night panicking. I didn't have, yeah. I don't think I did have that before that. Yeah. And then I lived with him for years. So it was like, you know, I got in the habit of you get startled and start screaming and running around and you're naked flopping around. And, um, <laughs> you're naked. But so it's like, Todd's always like, you know, it's a bad spin Todd, when you're she's naked. naked. Oh, oh, oh like, you naked. know it's a bad spin when she's naked. <laughs> running around the neighbor's door is like, oh God. but. But I think, um, so the woo woo would, if if I went to like a healer, they would probably be like, oh, an entity has attached themselves to you and we need to rid you of the spirit. Yeah. I'm not telling you which side I'm on because I waver. I go like this and that. But I always think there's such a benefit to both sides because if you think about manifestation, you think Mm -hmm. about the movie, The Secret, The Secret, when I first saw it, I was like, fuck is this? Yeah. Because I felt like it was missing a lot of components. I was like, yeah, the kid just said, I want a bike. I want a bike. I want a bike and got a bike. It's like. Yeah. I was like, but where's the hard work? You, yeah. you know, where's the hard work in it? It's like, it's not hard work. It's really because on manifestation side, they say you just calibrate to the vibrational level of the thing, which yeah. I do believe that. Yeah. But if I think about it on a more logic, like um, digestible way to, to talk to people that aren't into manifestation, if you believe, if you go every morning, I am going to make a million dollars. I am going to make a million dollars. If you keep saying that to yourself, you're going to start in your life looking for ways to make a million dollars. You're not going to be stopped in. I deserve nothing. I deserve nothing. I deserve nothing. Yeah. That's where I like hypnosis because it can, it can feed into both sides of those. Yeah. I love it too. And I love what you're saying so much because the brain science part made so much sense to me. The manifestation part, I had a hard time with aligning to the vibration of the, of your desire. Like I didn't, I was like, how does that, how do I actually do that? Yeah. You're like, wait, can you do that for me? <laughs> I was like, yeah, you have a machine that shakes you at the level you need. How do you actually do that? So understanding the brain science part piece. And what I mean by that is understanding how our thoughts create the way that we feel and how that is a habit. Right. Our thoughts and our feelings are habit. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, so if I'm feeling, you know, wonky or mad or frustrated or whatever it is all the time, that is, that is a habit of mine. Right. That's how I'm showing up. So if I want to change that, what do I need to do? So the brain science part made so much sense because I understood that I needed to change my identity. Mm-hmm. I needed to change how I think. I needed to change right. how I feel. I needed to change my behaviors and actions. Right. And I was like, oh. But it's so hard to do behaviors and actions if you don't believe you deserve the thing you're yes. going for. Yes. 
So then yes. there is this little part of faking it, and I think hypnos hypnosis comes in there because it's just yeah. shoving yeah. it in your head. <laughs> it's just like telling, I'm just like, what the hell? Like sometimes yeah. I'm like, yeah. Sometimes I listen to one of your hypnosis and I go, and then other times it's the same hypnosis and I'm like, yeah. Ah, yeah. You know, like yeah. you just like it's the repetition of it. Yes. Yes. And it's, you know, there's a teensy in the beginning, fake it till you make it. Then, yeah. then once you yeah. start seeing the evidence. Yes. Yes. So I call it a practice. Mm. We're practicing being the unstoppable version of ourselves mm -hmm. or the multi-million version of ourselves or the famous comedic actress or, you know, whatever it is, like we're practicing and you're not, you don't have to practice because you are that. But for other people that are just getting started, you know, it's really about practicing being that version that they desire to be. But most people won't do it because they don't even know what that means. Yeah. All they know is their limiting beliefs, the self-doubt that comes up. And so we look at, we look at each piece. So this is why I love the work that I do because People go, but Mary Lou, I can think and feel differently, but I'm still self-sabotaging. Right. <laughs> and I go, I go, well, let's talk about that. Right. Let's look at why you're self-sabotaging. And many times, Annie, you're right. It's about self-worth issues mm -hmm. or deserving issues. And once we look at that, you know, why do you believe that you don't deserve whatever it is, love or success? It or couldn't be me. Like that thing where it's like you have that little kernel of hope or that, yeah. that little thing that you want when yes. you're little or that. Yes. That dream and then going, well, it yeah. can't be me. Yeah. And and so that's the deeper issues. Like those are the root causes. Todd, did you have something you wanted to say? I was gonna say, or we could just all believe that no one deserves anything and that every everything that everyone's got, they never deserved it. But so. that's that is a that is a thing. Is it? Yeah. People do. That yeah. is that's like my that's parents. That's like what I think. Well, my yeah. parents had that with um there was my parents do landmark, and so then every once in a while they just have like a new language that they're using with me. I'm like, and there was one where it's like, deserve. Now, what do you mean by the word? Nobody deserves anything. I'm like, oh my God. You always know when they did a new course because they start saying the same thing. I'm like, oh so God. But, yeah, um, but I agree with you about right. the secret too. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many missing pieces mm -hmm. to that. It's like, and you are correct though. So like there's so many missing pieces. I was like, how do I actually become the secret? Well, I didn't know that I, the secret was me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that I was the secret, that Annie's the secret, that we all are the secret because I thought that the secret was something I had to understand. But now I know it's a part of, it's part of who I am that I can manifest anything, mm -hmm. but I know how to consistently manifest. Like I actually know what that means. And I think that there's a lot of manifestation out there where you're like, there's so many missing parts. Like mm -hmm. you think of, you know, a million dollars and you're like, you know, uh, every day I'm going to tell myself I'm a millionaire. And I totally agree with you that if you tell yourself enough times that you're a millionaire, you will start to see evidence of that. Right. But most people give up. Right. Because it feels so weird. Yes. Because it feels so weird. So they give up. So they don't right. follow through with it. But if they just kept at it, right. they would begin to rewire their brain. Yeah, I know. But it's... most people won't stick to it because they don't understand what's happening inside. They yeah. don't understand that the neural networks really are being created, but because they don't, they're not a millionaire after 30 days, they go, uh, this shit doesn't work. Yeah. But it really does. You need 60, 70 <laughs> I feel like I, like I, what happened with me too, was there were these little manifestations and they always say in manifestation, you're supposed to like, you set the intention and the, but you have to like, stop thinking about it. Cause the more you think about how you want something, you're actually, you're, setting the lack out into the universe you're actually you're projecting and vibrating in a lack level because you're going i don't have it because i yeah, want it because I, I want it, it. yeah but then there were these little things that these little pieces of evidence that started showing up in my life and i couldn't believe it and i will say there were some before i quit drinking and not that this is like a podcast where it's like you have to quit drinking or anything but i will say and i know mary lou will say like yeah. i cannot even tell you the shit that went down after i quit drinking like yeah and i think it was and yeah. also like leaving trash Tuesday, like big, big moves that I make that are very scary and take me out of my comfort zone. I have been, I gained so much goodwill with myself. It's like, yeah. I just really start to love myself a little yeah. more because I go, oh, I chose like against all odds. I chose myself yeah. and my happiness and my pursuits over yes. these other things. And so when I quit drinking, it was like, it was my, drinking was my favorite thing to do. I mean, it was my best bud. I mean, it yeah. fucking fucked me up and I was bleeding a lot and there was always checking for teeth and stuff, <laughs> but it was a mean friend. It was, it was a tough love friend. But like, so when I quit that and I realized I could do that, it was like, if I can do this, yeah, I can do anything. And then I just started to notice little things. 
And I would set these goals that felt like, and I wrote them down. I, I and my, this is where my ADD helps with my manifestations because I forget. I forget. ADD rules. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I was doing this guy. Um, I had a therapist who told me, um, he gave me these, these CDs. This was back in CD time. He gave me these CDs. It was 2008. I was just, or 2009. I had just moved. No, it was 2008. It was the end of 2008. I had just left Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, I was still drinking, but I was leaving Santa Fe to move to New York to do comedy. I wanted to move to LA, but I was drinking and driving. So I thought I had a drinking and driving problem. So I was like, we'll just take driving out of it. And then we'll go to New York. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm going to fall in the <laughs> subway. But anyway, so I lived with my parents for a couple months while I was like getting the courage to move to New York. So I moved back in with my parents in Philadelphia and I started seeing this therapist. And I was, I was just a little, I was like depressed because I had no self-worth, you know, and I was just drinking and I was like, what a, I'm like this loser. And even though I'd taken the step to move and everything. Yeah. So I, I went to see this therapist and he told me about this guy, Brian Tracy, and he had this, this book goals. And so he gave me the DVDs and I listened to them. And it was all about writing your goals, your 10 goals every day mm -hmm. and night, positive present tense, mm -hmm. and then three actionable steps, positive present tense that you could take to get there, yeah. which was like the cure of the secret for me because yeah. it was showing the action yes. too. Yes. And then, so I was, I wrote them yeah. for like a couple months, you know, I moved to sit to in, on my friend's couch and another friend in New York, one of my couch friends. And one of them was to be on Chelsea lately. One of them was to... Um, you know, to start comedy, to be on Chelsea. Like there were these things that I was so embarrassed even, right? I was like, I can't believe I think I could be on Chelsea lately. All these things completely forgot about this, these lists that I had written. And I wrote them like, I probably did a week of it maybe and never twice a day. I didn't even, you know, wow, you're and then I found them two years later and I had everything, yeah. agent, touring, like, and wow. then it was like, well, if I can get these, I got to dream, dream bigger. So yeah. now it's about the forgetting yeah, and just like, believing yeah. and you actually told me a term on our last session that I yeah. wanted to yeah. address on here yeah which was the was it gestational what the was love it love gestation yeah. yeah yeah I think it's so it's so beautiful and it's so fascinating to me because we're planting seeds mm. which are our dreams or our goals I mean if you don't want to use the word dreams it's our goals and what's so fun about it is that you plant you plant the seed and you nurture it as it's germinating, you yeah. know, it's like you give it love and you give it water and it's really happening. It's really growing. And that's right. how I see my goals, my visions and my dreams is that they're really happening. I may not be able to see all of the evidence. I may have circumstances that still tell me otherwise that your dream isn't really happening, Mary Lou, but I don't buy into it. Yeah. I'm like, yes, it is. Yeah. I, well, because you were saying like a pregnant woman doesn't go, there's not going to be a baby. She just knows there's going to be a baby and just prepares for yes, the baby. Yes. That's what's so fun. Uh -huh. Well, that's what they say. Like when you want to, when you want to uh, partner, if you're looking for a partner, you're supposed to like make yes. space in your closet and stuff, yes. which is like, I mean, it looks, you look delusional. <laughs> like if someone was ever like, you have an imaginary boyfriend in your house. Yeah. You know, but, but yes. those sort of things, like Todd and I just accomplished so much yesterday by we, we took all of our bags of clothes that we wanted to get rid of and we found a donation oh, right and on. just gave them. Yeah. And we're like, oh my God, it, it's out. Yeah. And now I'm like ready for my new clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah, on yeah, in yeah, new yeah, clothes. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, just that sort of like making yeah. space and, yeah. and trusting that yeah. you need the space because yeah. these things are coming. Yeah. And yeah. You nailed it. So like people always ask me, what's the secret to manifestation? I mean, there's many parts to it. Right. But the but I wouldn't say the biggest piece because the biggest piece is believing it. Mm. But the other biggest piece is like taking action. Yeah. Taking action on. As the person. As the person. Because the person would take action. The person would take action. Yeah. And so, and so I know when people come to see me, you know, it's like, I know I'm looking at all the different levels. Like I'm looking at what is it they believe? What are their patterns? What, why don't they take the action? Mm -hmm. And so we work on all of those different things, whether I'm doing it one-to-one -one or in a group, because ultimately the, the biggest, the biggest result that I want to see for people. Yes. I want people to make money. Yes. I want people to be unstoppable. Yes. I want people to be fulfilled. And I want people to take action, <laughs> Right. Yeah. take action on whatever it is. And most people don't take action because of their limiting beliefs right. or, you and know, who knows, maybe you're that strong of a manifester that you don't 
fucking need to take action. <laughs> I think I've used that as a cop out. I think there's a manifestation cop out where you're like, I'll just manifest. Like, yeah. I think I was doing that with my special where I was like, I'm just going to manifest the perfect set list. And really what it is, it's about giving myself, you know, 20 minutes to an hour each day that I have available to just yeah. hone in on it. It doesn't mean I have to be like with like a pen and a quill, you know, yeah. like I, I don't have to like yeah. be sitting there like, you know, yeah. but it is just focused energy on it. It could be me meditating on it with a pad and yeah. paper next to it or whatever. But I think I was almost copping out by going like, oh, I'll just like believe yeah. it's going to, and it will happen. Yeah. But maybe what I was doing was I was manifesting through <laughs> that. You know what I mean? I just, but yeah. yeah. Yes. And I was like, sorry to cut you off, but no, I was like, I off. want people like, it's like, you can consistently, you can consistently manifest and people are always manifesting. So, but usually people are manifesting what they don't want. Right. And like my job and my hope is that I teach people how to be consistent manifestors mm. and creators of their life. And this is why I love hypnosis so much because, you know, it's like the application of hypnosis can be used in so many different ways. Like it can work with people to help them manage their stress and their right. anxiety to heal their traumas. Mm -hmm. But my favorite thing is really unlocking people's potential. Mm -hmm. That's what I love yeah. is I know that inside of them, you know, there is limitless possibilities yeah. and to be able to help somebody truly step into their dream. And I wanted to share this with you. So uh, Blair, he, he gave me permission to, to, to share about this, but like he took Unstoppable You Now when I offered it a year ago and he went from car salesman to mortgage broker. And it, this is a big deal because wow. it's not just any mortgage broker. Now he works for the top brokerage wow, firm amazing. in his province in Canada. It's province, right? Not Providence. I say it wrong every time. So <laughs> whatever I think it is, it's not. And it's like so exciting because it's like, I know he's going to be driving a G-Wagon. Right? In six yes, months, he's going to be yes, calling me and yeah. he's going to be like, Mary Lou, I'm in my G-Wagon because mm -hmm. that's what he's visualizing. That yep. is what he's visualizing. Like he saw himself as a top broker yeah. and he's doing that. And did he have to leave his other job? First? He did. He left. His you have to, you guys, it's like, <laughs> it's the scary leap and you get it all. I'm telling you, it's the scary leap. <laughs> yes. I was terrified to leave Trash Tuesday. And it's okay. like, yeah, the, the energy that I get to put back into the things, it's just, I, it's unmatched. Yeah. I can't even believe it. Just having to schedule. Yeah. It's just, I can't even believe it. And you did it. I did it. You did it. Was it was so hard. You did it. And it's all working out. They're doing well. I'm doing, it's like, yes, it's a dream. Yes. There's no like, yes, nothing's yeah. like failing for anyone. Yeah. You know, it's all on the ups and I feel really yeah. And you just get proud of yourself. And they're like, Ooh, I'm getting addicted to being proud of myself rather than mad at myself because I had this like addiction to just like whipping myself. Yes. No, I guess I don't. It's like I was into yeah. S&M or something. Self-punishment. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, you f this up, yeah. You f this up. And it's yeah. like, I had to catch myself because I, I, my friend, um, uh, Ayala and I both had some like tasks we really wanted to get done. So I was like, let's just be our accountability buddies this, yeah. this weekend. And so she was like, wow, you got so much done last night. I used to be so proud. And in my head, I was like, well, I didn't get every. And then I was like, no, 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 bitch. Oh, you got you like got eight stars. I mean, maybe even 10 stars. Like, yeah. I'm like, you're good. Yeah. You're doing good. Yeah. And each star is like leading up to. And I think like a lot of the stars right now are eating yeah. stars, you know, where we're getting into this routine of just like, <laughs> and then it just becomes light cleaning. It's not I deep love it cleaning that takes all of my creative energy time. Oh, you know? Annie, congratulations. I know it's so exciting. It's so good because one of the things that I do in my, in one of my groups is we get on the call and I say, I say, okay, everybody put in the chat, you know, all of your wins and what are you celebrating? Mm. It's a big deal. Yep. What are you celebrating? And then I'll, then I'll say, then I'll say, now put your hand on your heart and acknowledge yourself mm. and tell yourself that you're doing a good job. And then somebody will, in, you know, inevitably they'll put in the chat, well, I didn't do all the things that I said I was right. going to do. And I was like, pause, you know, I'm right. like, let's pause on that. I'm like, let's celebrate what you are doing because that's what we've trained our brains to do Right, is to focus on what we're not doing. And then when you focus on our wins, it, it, the yes. wins multiply. Win Todd, multi this is what we do in Vegas. We only <laughs> acknowledge the wins. I'm like, why would I not do that with myself? In Vegas, we're like, we only acknowledge the wins. We only acknowledge, and we always yes. leave so happy, having had so much fun. Wow. Because we only look at the times we that won. That is so good. That I mean, I'm not saying go out and spend all your money, but <laughs> I mean, do it within reason. It'll be crazy. But it's like we only celebrate that we always leave happy, 
And yeah. if it starts to feel dark, we go, oh, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. You know, we're, we're moving to this area. Yeah. But um, yeah, you're training your brain to think differently and to acknowledge what you are doing versus right. the other way. Which, yep. So it's powerful. Yeah, it's I'm so, so glad cool. you caught that. No, it's like just celebrate the wins. Yeah. Just celebrate the wins. It was like, yeah. we got so much done. It was so, yeah. and it was fun. We had a great yeah. time. Aww. I'm really starting to put like, because, and I also realized once you start accomplishing a little bit, if you have this big goal, right? I always do this with ADD where I go, and it's kind of what I was saying before, the immediate result. I want to be done the whole thing yeah. right away. So I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't finish it. You know, but if you do break it down to these little actionable tasks, then you get the reward for each little task. And then yeah. it makes it so exciting because you're like, oh, I like the reward. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm going to get another reward. Yeah. Oh, and then everything just becomes so much easier. Yeah. And more fun. And I'm like, oh, it was so stressful. My yeah. jaw is getting looser. I'm just like, oh, that's I'm not. great. Well, you were the first one to tell me I was in fight or flight all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And that was huge because I've yeah. taken that on the road with me. I'm like. Yeah. You're in fight or flight. I'll be doing crowd work. You're in fight or flight. She's like, I am. You can see it. <laughs> but it is. I mean, we're just these like yeah. monkey brains that are still, yeah. we're like lizard yeah. people that are still yeah. in this old. Yeah. Yes. Because their programming's on autopilot. Right. It's just happening automatically. We don't even know that it's happening. Yeah. We think 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. And it's like 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts that we thought the day before and the day before. So we don't even know that it's I'm happening. I'm so glad I don't have a sex addiction. Because those people are just going, they're just thinking like, I got to, I got to get it wet. I got to get to I the gotta get it wet. I got to get it wet. I got to get it wet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are all your thoughts about reptiles? What do you think? When you're, when you allow yourself to think about your thoughts during the day, what are they about? Uh, my thoughts? I don't know. My it's thoughts so are just like new hobbies or things I could make or. Aww. I know he's so creative. And I'm so, his his editing <laughs> job's almost over. And we're about to get so creative up in this bitch. It's so yeah, work, a lot of work stuff. I got a tarot card reading and it was like, they were like, um, in your relationship house, you're going to have trouble with Todd. And then you're going to realize you can't work together as much. And I was like, no. They said Todd specifically? Well, they were, oh. they just said maybe it's Todd. They were going yeah. like maybe, yeah. you know. And I was like, no. I was you, like, what? You rejected no. it. I was like, I reject. And then I actually had someone I was working with tell me they didn't want to work with me anymore. And it was that. There you go. Or Tarot's fake. I don't know. I think yeah, it's real. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think Tarot's a good like. Oh, that's how we started today. I was like, are you going to do Tarot? She was, she was like, are you going to do Tarot for people? <laughs> I don't know. Tarot. <laughs> Tarot's up in the arrow for me, <laughs> but I think it's cool. I think yeah. it's fun. I think it's interesting. Yeah, I do too. But I felt very like rejecting of that because I feel like I'm so excited that Todd's going to have more time to create all these. He has this idea. He has this cartoon that he puts in um, the middle of Annie Wood when he's not working and has more time. You right monsters on, at home that don't realize Todd's doing all nighters to get this together. We're like, where do the cartoons go? But he, his next one is such a good idea. and. With the the super one. Oh, it's so good. I just can't wait to see it. I'm so excited. And then what I love about working with Todd, because I do think it can get inappropriate when you work with your loved ones on things and it can get like yeah, I'm blurred, sure. but I don't think we have that. I think it's really so fun to work with Todd and I'm so excited to get his brain Ooh, for me, so for fun. us, for our ideas, for his ideas. That's fun. And it's so fun that he has all these new hobbies because then I get secondhand new hobbies. He, he's been doing um, 3D printing. Oh, right on. He creates these things online. Go Todd. Isn't that so cool? Yeah. I love that. Go this Todd. is our gecko as a guy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Do you have one of those in your geckos? Like, uh, no, but he does tank? have some. He has like hides and stuff that he makes. It's really oh, cool. Right on. But I mean, Todd can have uh, Todd. I think we'll have an Etsy store soon selling those things. Oh, right on. But we're gonna make our Patreon. We're gonna be able to do a lot more fun, creative stuff on there. It's just like it's yeah. so exciting. Yeah. But that was another time where I was like, I reject this. I don't feel this. This is not. Oh, Annie. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I'd love to work with Scott. I would yeah. love, I, you know, today when we were going to the airport, I was thinking, I was like, gosh, this is the easiest relationship, the best relationship I've ever been in. And I was sitting there thinking that. And I said that to him and I'm like, and I deserve it. Yeah, <laughs> I do deserve yes. it. Yes. Yes. Well, Mary Lou's 
boyfriend is a project manager, right? Is that yeah, his, I is. mean, is that a cooler? Is that not? That's pretty sick. You just got someone to plan your fucking shit for you. <laughs> He's really great at planning. He's it's like it's so it's, it's a problem like, solver. That's yes. his job. That's incredible. He is a problem solver. Yeah. And he's super cute. Do you get in fights? He is cute. He's awesome. <laughs> Do you ever get in fights because you want to like hold on to your limiting beliefs? And he's like, no, there's a logical, very easy way to plan this out. You know, I definitely am more open to hearing him now without like giving him the snarl or the hiss. You don't understand how hard it is for me. It's true. It's, it's true. not as easy for me as it is for you. And he's just like, Ugh. I did. I did try to do. I, I think it was yesterday, the day before in the car. He like rushed me out of there and I forgot something. And I was like, well, if you hadn't rushed me, it's the first time I've done that. <laughs> and I was waiting for him to call me out on yeah. it and he didn't he just kind of let it slide but I mean it's but you so, called yourself on it so I did good, well man. I mean I did it and I was like Silent, uh, yeah. like I guess it's a win for me <laughs> and I was like wow you know it's just so healthy and so fun I you know because I don't do that with him I take full responsibility yeah even though I, I like hiss at him or <laughs> yeah yeah I do I go <laughs> <laughs> like a mad cat. <laughs> But, um, you know, I forget to lock windows and yeah, it's hard, sometimes it's hard to... I have a little bit of the ADHD brain, but he doesn't. And that's why it's a good match. That's how I feel with Todd. Best. It's like, I know that people why I, are like yeah. opposites. Attract. We're not opposites. It's like, it is the yin yang. Like we really yeah. do pick up yes. where, like where he doesn't have anxiety. I get to have anxiety yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's fun. Like I love to travel. I love to go on the road. So I get to be the one that does that. Todd, I, I used to bring him on the road and not that he won't come on the road with me again at some point, because yeah. that was kind of a magical time. It was fun when our whole family was going on yeah, the road, but Randy. it was also we would come home and then everyone's stressed. So now that Todd has expressed that he doesn't really like traveling, I went, oh, instead of being like, he's abandoning me. I'm like, oh, now I have my family to support me when I come home tired yeah. and to pick up, you know. Yeah pick me up where I'm, yeah. where I have gotten sleepy and tired yeah. and fallen. Yeah. So it's like cute. It's I like, know. good. he's it, a homebody and I love being out. And then sometimes I can drag him with me. And yeah. Sometimes he can convince me to stay home. Not often. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like it's so fun when we, when I call you and I mean, it's, I think I've called you and, and was so mad at Scott one time Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that's how like, it's like, it just doesn't happen yeah. where we get angry, that angry. And yeah. it was because I, I, um, I left the keys, you know, to the front of the house. Like I actually left the keys in the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes drinking wasn't the problem, guys. And so, and so, uh, you know, I was like, well, I was trying to get Zoe and, you know, I was trying to get my headphones and everything all organized. And I was like, and I left the keys in the front door. And, um, and so we had to figure out a solution that, that yeah. worked for it. But I remember I was so angry and I called Annie and I was like, I'm going to break up. <laughs> I'm going to break up with him. And it was just in that moment. It wasn't true. I wasn't going to. But I, I love being able to call Annie because Annie has such a great relationship, too. And it's so mm. fun that two, the two of us can talk about how incredible our partners are. I know. Are. It's so nice. Yeah. It's so, oh, God, I just been with so many, like, and I have to accept responsibility because it, yeah. it's not like they were horrible people and I was this amazing person and stuff. It's like I just got into situations that were, like, going to spike my cortisol, make yeah. me freak out i mean yeah. literally it was like skydiving all day every yeah, day it was hard. just like am i gonna splat on the ground like yeah. it was just yeah so tense and that's why i'm so grateful for the pandemic because how comfortable todd made me feel in a way that was uncomfortable to me because i was comfortable in this chaos yeah because it mirrored my young child under yeah. seven years old i I would have gotten the fuck away. From, I mean, I would have just dumped him. So I would have been like, because I was scared. You know, I was really scared. But Todd was so smart. He he had his people eat a bat, and and give us Aww. mad cow. What is it called? Give us that thing we can't talk about. His people started this whole virus so that we could be together, and then the pandemic, and then I love listing his face, and then and then it was true love, friend. and then it was true love. No, but then he was like, let's get a dog. Like he just did these settling things. Like Aww. his settling, like forced me into a settle. And if I like, I believe in myself. And sometimes I have nightmares where Todd breaks up with me. And, but even in my nightmares, I'm like, I'll be okay. You know, like I do, I still have healthy yeah. experiences in that. But without Todd, 
my life would be, I'm sure, fine, you know, but with Todd, it's just so good. And I had to get myself to the point where I knew I deserved that. And I deserved someone that was like calming and sweet and and loyal, loyal. And yeah, just like and fun, fun, which is a sense of humor, laughs all the time. I didn't mean to do this right then. (laughs) That was I was really just that was subconscious. I don't want to stop though. Oh, I don't feel done. I, I, you know, it's so fun. I mean, I, it's, I know we're doing the girly thing right now, yeah. but I feel like, you know, it's so fun to see like how much fun you and Todd have together mm-hmm. when we hung out, when we went to Catalina. It was so know? fun. It was I know. So great. We've been on ferries together, baby. <laughs> it's, we've been, we've like been on it. It's like, when I think about it, I honestly feel like this is the best part of my life. Mm. I'm the happiest. I'm the mm-hmm. freest. I'm the most unstoppable. I get yeah. to do what I love in the world. Yes. Like I, I get to help people. You know, it's like I get to just like it's so fulfilling. And I'm I feel so blessed that I'm that I have the gift that yeah. I can really help people get unstuck. And, and you really do. You've helped me so much. Aww. And you've helped my dad. I mean, this is where it's crazy. You have like made such an impact on my dad's life. Mary Lucy's my dad. It's my dad loves you so much. Like Aww. I'm glad my mom's not a jealous person. I mean, oh my God, he brings you up all the time. He calls you Mary Ellen a lot, but he does know he does know your name. He catches himself every time. He oh, loves funny. you, and he he's got his little systems in place, yeah. his Mary Lou systems. And then when I call him, it's so, it's such a gift too because when I call him when I'm upset about something, he'd he'd be like, "Did you listen to Mary Lou's thing of this or whatever?" It's like really sweet to have the same tools, yeah, that are Mary Lou with my dad. And yeah, it's just been, yeah, I just really appreciate what you've taught me, how you've helped me really dig deep. And it's just why it's just really every session I have with you is just, yeah. And your programs are amazing. Oh, thank you. And yeah. yeah, And our friendship too. It's just really, it's a sweet little soul sister. We are soul sisters. We're, we're star seeds. Star seeds. I know. And um, yeah, no, it's been, it's been quite the, it's. I'm so, so grateful that I decided to quit drinking and say yes to life Mm -hmm. and say yes to transforming myself so that I could live my best life and then help others also live their best lives. Like, I feel like I'm starting the unstoppable movement. Yes, it is. (laughs) And it is. I hear Todd laughing. It's so great. He's not laughing. He's being cute. (laughs) And it's just, it's incredible. And I feel like, I feel just really blessed. Yeah. And the fact that I get to be and to um, work with people like your dad and to Mm -hmm. work with you and to work with people who know that they're meant for so much more and they just don't know how to get there. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. I know. It's really, it's cool to just be in gratitude. I know it's it's almost like a hacky thing because everyone's always like, oh, just being gratitude. And you're like, I am a fucking gratitude, you know? (laughs) But it really is. Yeah. You just see where you grow. Like, you it's like celebrating the wins, you know, it's like, just look at the things that you have that are going so well and so great. And I think of like my money blocks and stuff like that. And it's like, I was looking at it, like, I want more things, you know? And then I was feeling like triggered by like, that feels selfish or whatever. And then I started thinking about all of these things that I would want to do with the money. Like there's just things that I've had since I was like 17 traveling in yeah. Central America, like I had these like little plans yeah. that were little seeds in my head. And I'm like, oh my God, those were things that I manifested that I'm going to be able to do yes. one day when yes. I have the right amount of money that are just like this thing that it struck me like lightning, 17 years old yeah. in Guatemala, like the shit that I want to do there. And I'm just getting so excited about it. Yeah. You know, oh, and then so I'm beautiful. like, oh, that's such a like more positive way to think than like, oh, I want like a wrap on my Tesla or whatever, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not that that's a thing, wrap but, on your Tesla. Yeah, but you know, like, <laughs> you know, and that's easy. Not that there's anything wrong with wanting yeah. beautiful things. I think yeah. that that's okay too. It's just for me, like that helps me get through some of my blocks. Yeah. And then to just yeah, be so grateful for where I am. I mean, I was just like a drunk person. Oh, I know. Falling yeah. off my scooter in Santa Fe, like no. literally bleeding from my face. And I just went, I think I could be a comedian. And then I was like, did the Montreal Comedy Festival two years later? I was like, I just like everything just kept going. And then, yeah. And I'm talking a lot about myself because I want to use myself as an example for you guys where I just want to show you the evidence that I have in my life yeah. of these things. And, and I, you know, I hope that you guys, it reminds you of the stuff in your life that's also going well. And for sure. 
And I just, yeah, I you, just feel so. You are living proof. I just feel and, so good. Yeah, yeah I'm living so proof. You. Yeah, I, know. I was like, and I love to talk about money because there's, it's so, it's, it's just so juicy because yeah. there's the way that we were raised and programmed with money and what we believe about money, and and when we overcome those blocks, you know, making money really is easy. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to believe that when right. you're stuck in it yes. and you can't, you know, cause I was stuck in it for so long. I mean, I grew, I was born into poverty. Like, and I, and I, I kind of smile when I say that, cause I can almost hear my mom, like throwing a shoe at me, telling me, <laughs> don't tell everybody <laughs> that you were, that we were poor. <laughs> yeah, and, and for all of the, the fans that are, that are Latinos, you'll totally understand <laughs> this, but you know, growing up, my mom used to take off her shoe, like, throw it at our That's heads. So funny, she, you always say that. I'm, I was like, what you, she's like, I know you want to throw your shoe at me. I was like, I've never considered throwing a shoe at a person. It's true. <laughs> we became expert shoe dodgers. <laughs> I did always say that. Yeah. I did because that's how we grew up. It's like we would like dodge the the chancla. But um, but money, like it was, you know, I had this poverty and lack mindset, but I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I didn't know that 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 I was broke in my you mind. You just thought you were not worth or like I just must not be good if I'm not making money or something, right? It was the craziest thing because I saw that other people were making money doing what I was doing. And I was like, what's what's happening? Like what's going on that I that that I'm not able to create more wealth in my life? And so now that I've overcome that and I help others overcome it, Annie doesn't need any help with that because <laughs> she's already a hundred million dollar Annie. But, but now that I'm in this place, like I have, I have like, I donate more than I've ever donated my entire life. You know, it's like I give to Ad Adelante Mujeres in <laughs> Forest Grove. That's my favorite that's my favorite cause to give to, you know, it, it's women, it's an organization that helps uh, Latina entrepreneurs. And I love that so much because I know that my mom wanted to, to be an entrepreneur. And so what did I, she want to do? My mom, <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm like laughing. I'm like, I don't know why I'm looking at Todd. She wanted to like, so she wanted to like sell jewelry, you know, oh. she wanted to, you know, do things with her hands mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, she just didn't have, she, I remember she would ask me questions about how to get started. And I just was in college. Like I you didn't, didn't know, yet, I didn't yeah. know how to help her. And so to be able to give to organizations that I believe in, mm -hmm. like Annie, it makes me feel like yeah. a total baller. You yeah. know, like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm making the world a better place, not only by helping people, but by, by also giving back. Right. And it's, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. It feels good. And it feels good. And that's another thing where it's like, when you feel like you're not worthy of having wealth or being financially comfortable. It's you can help, you can help people when you are like once yes. your cup is full, it's like, then you yes. have more to give. So it's yes. there are ways to look at it. And I know that's like, I don't want to sound too like bleeding heart and like, Oh, you know, like be one of the girls that was like at the protest, like, you know, like in yeah. pictures and stuff. But, yeah. but I mean, it's true. I mean, you know, and I think I've been really trying to work on just not worrying about being cringe and not worrying yeah. about just like be as like absolutely authentic as I can be and just be as like just as bright as yeah. loud as shiny as I can be and just not fucking care yeah because it's it's just it's so as an artist it's so hard to create art when yeah. you're worrying about how people are viewing you it's like I like so now what I'm really working on is like getting back into like creating from the inside out and what I love and I've just been completely unblocked, just new jokes on stage, just having so much fun. And yeah, just really, it's been just really fun. It's just been really cool. Just everything's so fun. It's just so fun. I got a good, I got a good family. Yeah. So yeah, people ask questions like, um, can you be hypnotized to quit smoking, which you did help me with? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I forgot about that. Yeah. I know. Yes. Just in my identity. Yeah. And then they asked, um, can, why are certain people More. able to be hypnotized and others not? So one made that one's very interesting. I yeah. Think. So I, so it's, it, this is how I look at it. So some people are more suggestible than others. And it's really the way that our brain is wired. So what do I mean by that? So I believe that everybody can be hypnotized for the most part unless you absolutely are against it. If right. you are against it, then you will not be hypnotized. Right. So if you're, if you're, you know, I, I, it depends on what the question, like what they're referring to, if they're referring to being with a, you know, a hypnotist who's, or a hypnotherapist who is, 
who was hypnotizing him and they didn't feel hypnotized, there's a lot of things that could be factors. Number one, you may not have trusted the hypnotist mm -hmm. or yeah, hypnotherapist. Yeah, it's like that one guy that came, I was like, Yes, I don't know. if you don't trust them, then they, you will absolutely not be, like you won't, you won't relax enough. You won't listen to what the instructions are. But for the most part, if people can follow instructions, then they are able to be hypnotized. So what does hypno hypnosis really mean? It just means that we relax you enough that your brain waves slow down. So the way that we do that is we say, focus on your eyes and relax your eyes. And so we have you focus on different body parts. I mean, there's different ways to do it, but most people will have you focus on different body parts and, you know, tensing and then releasing and re relaxing your body parts. And if you follow the instructions, then your brain waves will slow down. And if you move into alpha or theta brainwave state, you are hypnotized. Now, that doesn't mean that you're deep. That doesn't mean that you're unconscious, like you still will have thoughts, even though you, and so most people believe that if you're hypnotized, that that means you black out and that's not true at all. You just, you still have your thoughts. You're still thinking, you're still, yeah. <laughs> you're just relaxed. And so some people are more suggestible. So some people can go in deep into, into uh, relaxation. I am one of the people, I'm, I'm one of those people who it takes a lot of effort for me to relax and to become open to usually my audios or I listen to other people's audios. I call them brain training because that's how I see hypnosis. You know, hip, it, when we're in hypnosis, we're training your brain to think and feel differently. So I really feel like people think that if they're not in deep, then they believe that they're not hypnotized. So there's a lot of factors to this Mm -hmm. question. But for the most part, if you follow instructions and you're able to relax and your brain waves slow down, which means that your eyes are closed mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're in a theta or alpha or theta brainwave state, you are, you are receptive. Now, right. how receptive you are, I don't know. It depends on, yeah, it depends on your brain. But most people are hypnotizable. I mean, we're hypnotized every single day by the TV, right. by what's on the news. We just don't call it hypnosis. But Ooh, she's spitting. Doesn't that sound like a rap? <laughs> <laughs> we just don't call yeah. it hypnosis. We call it the news. Right. Um, but so I'm of the belief that most people can be hypnotized. Now there's, you know, whether or not they go deep or not, that's a different story. Everybody has a different way of responding to hypnosis. But you can reject it. Right. Like if you're like, I I'm not going to do this, then you can totally reject it. But doesn't that kind of come into one of the other more common questions too? I think where people are like, can someone make you do something you don't no. want to do? Yeah, absolutely In not. Hypnosis, yeah. You will not do it. Yeah. It's whatever your subconscious will allow you to do, you'll do. So if yeah. you are, a if you murderer, are, <laughs> I guess someone can make a murder, but yeah. I feel like logically what I would say, I would guess what that is. It's like, if you, you have to, nobody can do anything for you. So it's not like hypnosis can come in and yeah. you have to be in open, agreement and yeah. open. So like when she hypnotized me to quit smoking, I was ready to quit smoking. Yeah. If I had been not ready yet, yeah. I think it would have been more of a yeah. struggle, but it was just one session with us. Yeah. Me. That was yeah. really cool. And I we really attached me not yeah. smoking with freedom. Oh my gosh. And then my identity <laughs> is that I am a non-smoker. So I don't <laughs> smoke. I never smoke. Yeah. And I could break that and then go back. I could. Yeah. But it's just right now, it's so easy for me to not do it yeah. because it isn't in my identity. I would have to like force myself to smoke. Yeah. And get back into that pattern. Yeah. I think it's just, you know, the way that I really understand hypnosis now is that you just close your eyes. And if you want to learn, you know, if you want to change, then you will be open and receptive to it. And if you don't really want to change or you're blocking yourself for whatever reason, then you won't then it won't be effective right. for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think so. One of the basic things when you were talking about alpha and theta, I know that one of the basic things is the best time to listen to hypnosis yeah. is in the morning and at night. Right. Yep. So when you're when yeah. you're sort of slowly waking up and when you're slowly going to sleep. Yeah. Maybe not in the middle of the night when you're waking up and panicking. Yeah. But, but I still do it then. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that's when your brain is most susceptible. So I think when you go to the hypnotherapy, it's like they're the hypnotherapist is doing a trick on your brain to get you to that level that you naturally are at. Yeah. Upon waking. Yeah. yeah. If, 
if, and you know, it's like, I, I wanted to share some of my favorite tools and we're running out of time, so we can't do that, but there are some really effective tools that can help people rewire their brain mm -hmm. on their own, which is also self-hypnosis. But, you know, uh, I just call them tools because people get all weird about the word mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm hypnotizing myself, right. but there are some really great tools that people can, can, um, do on their own to help them begin to believe that they're, you know, deserving and that they're unstoppable or whatever it is for them. That's my right. word. That's the word that I always use, but, um, to help them begin to believe something different, to help them get the self-confidence and the self-belief in themselves. So there's lots of like tools that I would love to give uh, some, <laughs> come on. God, so, sorry. So one of the things that's really, really effective is you telling yourself what you need to hear in your own voice. So taking your voice, you know, your mm. voice memo right. recorder on your phone, pressing record and saying some really beautiful, I don't call them affirmations. I call them beliefs. Right. What is it that you want to believe and tell yourself in present positive tense, right. as Annie was talking about earlier, not, I will not when I have money, I will be happy. I am happy now. I believe in myself now. I am unstoppable now. And so just record for one to two minutes and, and then listen to that at night before you fall asleep. And when you first wake up, I mean, it's the easiest thing to I do. I got to do it. I never do it. That one I resist for some reason because it's so easy. I think because it's so, it's so easy. easy. I'm like, I can't do this I one. love hearing But I myself. was thinking that I had that, that download last night when I was having my panic again. I went, I should, I should be saying something to myself when I go to bed. Yes. Oh my gosh. That or visualizing. Right. I mean, there's so many fun, fun effective tools to rewire your right. brain in addition to hypnosis. Right. I love hypnosis because it accelerates your transformation. Mm. And it, it does. It totally like uh, more and more neuroscientists are talking about how, you know, how the efficacy of hypnosis. And if anybody wants to like learn more about hypnosis, go to googlescholar.com type in hypnosis and all these peer reviewed studies will come up and right. you can do your own uh, research on whether you believe in hypnosis or not. I was so proud of you for this amazing self plug. And then you just plugged something else. <laughs> do you want to learn more about hypnosis? Go to a website. That's not mine. <laughs> can you give them your website too? Oh my God. Yeah, Mary Lou Rodriguez.com. <laughs> or you can follow me at Mary Lou hypnotizes you on Instagram. Follow her on Instagram. We're getting that following. Yeah. Up, baby. And if you type, if you DM me, Annie, I have a special gift. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So go, that's Mary Lou hypnotizes you. Mary Lou hypnotizes you. Yeah. We'll put that down and yeah. DM her, follow her. You have to follow and DM her. Don't try to get away with not following her. <laughs> I will say that some of my, my fans have gone to, they love you. It's so yeah. cute. I, and it's my, my honor, my pleasure to, to share you with my people. Oh, Annie, thank you. I know we're going to plan to do some fun stuff together too in the future. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've been pitching Annie on a few ideas that I think are super, are going to be super, super fun. Some and collabs, baby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we could have, and we could hypnotize Todd. He could we, be our, we'll hypnotize <laughs> Todd. <laughs> We're in our goddess era, guys. Okay. So join us. Join us or I'm suffer. joking about that. I know. I can't even think of what he wanted to do. I won't make Todd uh, bark like a dog. Oh my God. We'll make him be a chicken. <laughs> Don't worry, Todd. But so, okay, guys, you have the tools of the beliefs. Yeah. You now have access to Mary Lou. If you Aww. go to her Instagram, DM her Annie, follow her too. Don't be crazy. Um, this is fun. Yeah, this Thank was so you, fun. Annie. I know I could have done so many hours with you. It our really, cameras will it shut is off. like our Zoom calls. I know, I love my girl. Well, it's funny, sometimes when we're just talking as friends, I can hear her get her like hypnotist voice yes. on. And then you can hear her, I go, oh God, I might have to Venmo her. <laughs> it turns into a session. I'm like, oh shit. She can hear me writing. I know, I kind of panicked for a moment because I was like, where's my journal? Yeah. <laughs> In case yeah, I yeah. needed to take notes. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Anyways. Well, Aww. Annie Woodies, we love you. Thank you so much. And please enjoy Mary Lou. This yeah. is like, she's changed my life. She's Aww. changed so many people's lives. And that's really her goal. So please check her out. She has so many programs and um, a lot of free offerings and stuff like that. But definitely DM her and follow her. And let's get going, baby. Let's, let's <laughs> achieve our dreams. That's right. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Really do. We love each other. It's the meat and potatoes.
Welcome to any wood. This is the land of the stannies, annies, and fannies, and all of the sleep and nannies. Yeah, welcome to any wood. This is the land of the stannies, annies, and fannies, and all of the sleep and nannies. I'm gonna fire Oscar. I'm about to prosper. Blingy on my drinky, and Randy is living proper. Protector of the sick, she never let her fishes die. Never known to tell a lie, she even fixed Todd's eyes. Shout out to the slugs, shout out Woody's too. Shout out SD and Kalila and the Annie Wood crew. Cause this is Annie Wood, you know that this is how I'm living. Real and never pretending shit, you know that this is a gift. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the Stannies, Annies, and Fannies, and all of the Sleeper Nannies.